Disease is the number one killer of Americans, and to help ways, raise awareness of the disease and funds for research, the American Heart Association is holding its annual Quad Cities Heart Ball this weekend. We have a few guests here to tell us more about it and how we can help. We have Malik Kalik, he's a volunteer with the Heart Ball. We have Maddox McCubbin, who is actually a cardiac arrest survivor, and joining Maddox is his mother, Grace. And you both are going to, to share your story here in just a moment. And I appreciate all three of you being here today to talk about this uh, very important event. And, you know, this has been going on for a long time, the Heart Ball here in the Quad City. So, Malik, we're going to start with you. What exactly is the Heart Ball? Heart Ball is a year-round effort of celebration patients' lives. It's a way to raise awareness. It's a way for people to get involved. And it's also a way to raise funds for American Heart Association's life-saving mission. As you know, heart disease is number one yeah. killer. <laughs> Our objective is people to be aware, mm -hmm. people to be, aware, be involved, and what they can do to take care of their own health risks. And, and this is a big year for the Heartball because the American yes. Heart Association is celebrating its centennial. So how are you going to mark the occasion this year? You know, we are looking forward to celebrating 100 years of progress being made yeah. regarding heart disease. Yeah. You asked a really good question. During this time, We'll be looking backwards about yeah. how far we have come. We'll also be looking forward to what's new opportunity and research and science available at this event. All right, and uh, we want to talk to Maddox real quick. Um, as we mentioned, you're a survivor of, of cardiac arrest. Yes. Talk about your experience. Um, well, leading up to it, I was having a pretty normal day, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I walked into my six period study hall and I didn't leave the room conscious. Um, oh my gosh. Around the end of class, I felt maybe a little dizzy, sure. a little out of it. And then next thing I knew, I was in an ambulance hours later inbound to Iowa City. So what was your thought when you got to Iowa City and they told you that you essentially had a heart attack? <laughs> I mean, shock? Sure. I mean, it was really just the last thing that I would expect. Yeah. Ever? <laughs> sure, yeah, especially at, at such a young age. And, you know, I think that's a kind of a common misconception is that heart attacks only happen to older people, but, I mean, it can happen to younger people as well. Well, actually, just I have to interject yeah. because um, so sudden cardiac arrest is not a heart attack. That's actually oh, sure. a super okay. common misconception. Yeah. And it's one of the... Um, <clears throat> one of the areas of education actually for the American sure, Heart Association yeah. because uh, so a, a heart attack is caused by heart disease or a blockage sure. in the heart. Sudden cardiac arrest on the other hand uh, doesn't always have a definitive cause. In fact, yeah. most people who suffer from sudden cardiac arrest are never diagnosed with really? any a definitive cause for why it happened. Um, and so the difference is that well, a heart attack is a blockage in the heart. Yeah. Sudden cardiac arrest is a skipped beat. And okay. a skipped beat is all it takes to stop your heart. Okay. Um, so sudden cardiac arrest, and, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. Sure, yeah. Because that is actually what brought me into activism. Yeah. Because, first of all, you never think that you're going to hear the words 16-year-old son and sudden cardiac arrest in the same sentence. Right. And my first reaction was, how could my 16-year-old son have a heart attack? Sure. And that was the first thing that the doctors educated yeah. us on was, well, he didn't have a heart attack. Um, and then from there, we found out that sudden cardiac arrest is actually the number three leading cause of death oh in this goodness. country. Okay? Wow. okay? It's the number one leading cause of death for student athletes. Wow. It's been studied as a phenomenon in this country for over 30 years. It's not new. It's sure. happening all the time, everywhere. It can't be predicted. It can't be prevented. Mm -hmm. Maddox had a clean EKG in the emergency room just an hour after having a sudden cardiac arrest. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So. That's actually, that's what we're doing here. That's what the American Heart Association's yeah. goal is, is to educate and bring awareness to these to these issues. Um, and the Heart Ball is an incredible opportunity for the community to raise funds for this organization. Because here, here's the thing, we have tornado drills. Yeah. We have fire drills. We've already accepted that there are eventualities sure. that we can't control as a society. We can't predict or prevent them, so we have to be prepared to face them when yeah. they happen. Sudden cardiac arrest must be added to that list, right? A drill 
to respond to sudden cardiac arrest belongs in every school and every workplace and every church everywhere that, that we have the opportunity to do that because a school is actually more likely to need a defibrillator than they are right. to have a fire in the building. Right, so it should just be a, a normal a normal practice to have cardiac arrest drills as well. But it's not. It's not. And, so and it's not federally mandated Right. anywhere. Right. And neither are having AEDs. Uh, you know, I think a lot of parents like me are under the assumption that when we send our children places to school mm -hmm. that, of course, the staff is all CPR trained and, of course, they know what to do in the event of an emergency. And I think that in the Quad Cities, we're very fortunate that a lot of our districts are. Yeah. But that is not the case throughout the country. It's not mandated. Nobody's making sure that it's happening. And uh, the unfortunate reality of that is that an out-of-hospital sudden cardiac arrest has a fatality rate of 90%. Oh. 90%. Oh, I, I mean, that's a startling statistic. It is. So, obviously, I mean, obviously you're very passionate about this subject for very. good reason. Uh, the American Heart Association has certainly helped you a lot, and you're helping them as well raise this awareness. So, Malik, I want to go back to you. How were funds raised at the Heart Ball for, for this important association? American Heart Association is the largest funder of heart and stroke-related research beside federal government. Fund raised at these events will majority goes towards funding the research, science, and new ways to take care of patients. Mm. American Heart Association takes the science, translates into patient care guidelines, works along with the hospital and our local community to take care of patients. So very important, every dollar, Absolutely. Every dollar matters yeah. for this event. And in fact, I guess this is somewhat good news. The event's nearly sold out, but there is still a way that you can get involved by bidding on the silent auction or by making a donation at heart.org slash quad cities heartball. Uh, Malik, Maddox, and Grace, I appreciate you all being here. And Grace, really educating us ab about yeah. sudden cardiac arrest. Yeah, and you know, I, I did a TED Talk recently about it. If mm -hmm. you want to learn more about it, please check it out and the Quad Cities TEDx. Okay. I think that there's a huge opportunity for everyone in our community to share and educate and save lives in the process. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate your time today. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you for having us.